I wasn't working on climate. I was, as I like to say, innocently practicing law in DC. <laughs> and then I went in house for, as a non-lawyer hmm. for a company, which was everybody's fa favorite energy company at the time, the uh, governor of Texas, where they were headquartered, had a nickname for Kenny boy, the CEO, and they were Bill and Al's favorite energy company. They were supposedly free market pioneers, but in fact, they were political capitalists, political, they were very opportunistic. Obviously the company was Enron and I went in house as director of federal government relations in, I forget, May of 97. Okay. By June 97, I was a sole practitioner because it was essentially a no interview job offer. And I hadn't really gotten around to their business model, which was, it was varied, but they're, they'd stake their big bet on something I actually hadn't understood. Fully grown man, but I didn't understand rent seeking mm -hmm. and a Baptist and bootleggers and they combined them both. So this was, if you've got, I guess the easy one is the windmills, but let's say guardrails, you think uh, you make guardrails or mm -hmm. you galvanize. And so you work with lawmakers to make sure that every road in the name of mm -hmm. rhymes with children, <laughs> and there's a public safety interest in the name of the children. We need to make sure that every road is covered entirely with guardrails, three layers deep, so one. That would be rent seeking. And that was Enron's game, but with windmills and gas, <laughs> the world's biggest gas pipeline outside of Gazprom. And yeah. they had just bought the world's largest wind company, Zond Wind, Enron, and now GE Wind. Okay. And they bought it on the cheap because it's not economic. Yes. And Ken Lay was very good at working with friends in government to add value to things he bought. And his idea was to add value to his gas pipe space on which would be even more valuable. Okay. And his windows make people buy my stuff also should be a red flag when they come head in hand to the White House and say, as they just did again last week with man, yes. yeah. unless you make people buy my stuff or give me a preference yeah. or go after my competition or give me this bag of money, why I won't exist. And unfortunately, the answer from the politicians is never, then don't exist. It's because when that bag of money, that preference, the coercion, or the going after kneecapping your opposition ends, you're going to be back here saying, okay, even when they do this, but I'm an infant industry, like when I was just commercialized in the eighties, it was the 1880s, but I just came online in the eighties. You got to help me out. I've been living in the taxpayer's basement since the seventies, but yeah, unless you do this, I won't exist. Does anybody at this point get offended when they then say, isn't it time we began investing in? We will be. Give me all those bags of money back. And then we can play your game about, isn't it time we began investing in? So that was Enron's game. Rent seeking BP had the solar panels. They had hired a PR firm to turn them into a starburst sunburst company uh -huh. beyond petroleum. Okay. And you look at the annual report. No, not the other. Okay. But there was, it was a Baptist and bootleggers group. And I found myself in a meeting room of a law firm that's now bankrupt with a who's who, you need to concern scientists and all in the spring of 97, discussing how to get the U S involved in a global warming treaty. And I'm seated next to a guy from an industry trade association. And I leaned over asking what we were doing with people who so quite clearly are committed to putting you out of business, trying to play this game. After all, they couldn't be thinking. Oh, they'd never go all the way. Politicians are adults. They're controlly. Dogs don't slip leashes. And then he smiled. Yeah, I know. It was about how to get the Paris tree. Okay. Again, I raised some questions. My boss really didn't like that. And I was soon gone.